Hello, in this video we're going to look at the extended Cauchy Schwartz inequality. And first I want to quickly review the Cauchy Schwartz inequality and then and then we'll jump right into the extended version. So let B and D be any two P by 1 vectors, then this relationship holds. And this is the Cauchy uh, Schwartz inequality. Now I have a video called Cauchy Schwartz inequality that that proves this and so we won't go there. But one note in the video, I use the uh, series notation as opposed to the vector notation, but they're the same. And so this would be, you know, each component squared and, and you can make the connection. But the proof is in this video. So now the extended Cauchy-Schwartz -Sch inequality is this. So we're going to let B and D be any two P by 1 vectors again. But we're going to let B be a positive definite matrix, which means it has an inverse matrix. Then this relationship holds. And so if we can uh, see the similarity, so re really actually they're similar except for there's a B matrix and a B inverse matrix here. And this, this is it. This is extended uh, Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. And so the, and the, 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 it is inequality if B is can be represented like this, or if D can be represented by this. And this is for any constant C, because essentially, if you, this C is, if you multiply both sides times C, you know, you, you still have the same inequality. You can cancel C or, or whatever. Um, so here's a proof of it. So since B is positive definite, we create a square root matrix such that B is equal to B to the one half, B to the one half. And I have a square root matrix in quotes because I have a video called square root matrix and which that shows this is possible and, and how to create a square root matrix. So now note that the square root matrix is symmetric. Now if we let B star be b to the one half b and d star be b inverse to the one half d then we use the cauchy schwartz inequality with these two vectors b star and d star now we put b star and d star into the cauchy schwartz inequality and now we unfold what we just did so B star is this, and D star is this, and, and the similar you know, substitution here. Now this uh, transpose, we distribute, 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 and we get this. So the B prime, and since B uh, to the one half is symmetric, we get this. And the same way for each one of those. Now B to the one half and b to the one half inverse, those cancel leaving the identity matrix. This, we just get b. So here this comes down, this is just b, and then this is b inverse. And so we're finished. So now, um, one comment from YouTube subscriber Random Dude, which to me is kind of a very cool statistical, you know, name for YouTube, Random Dude. Um, he he wanted to me to give examples or intuition by behind these results, and so a quick example is discriminant analysis. And discriminant analysis is you're taking a multivariate data and trying to decide whether it it comes from one of several populations. And so here here's an example. So let's say we have two populations, and the two populations are the patient has flu and the patient and the other population the patient doesn't have flu and a data point is a p by one vector x and so the components of this can be how severe is your cough how severe is your fever how severe is your muscle aches how severe is you know your headache and etc so they, it can be signs and symptoms into this vector so now we know that the mean of this vector, if given it's from population one, is mu one. And if it's from population two, it's mu two. And we're going to assume that they have a common covariance matrix. 
And with this assumption, it fits into what's called linear discriminant analysis. If we assume that the covariances aren't the same, then it kind of jumps into what's called quadratic discriminant analysis. But here we'll assume they're equal. And we want to transform our multivariate data to univariate data with some linear combination. Now, so we take our multivariate data, we, we take a linear combination, and we get a number. And then we're going to use that number to decide if it's population one or population two. And a couple notes before we uh, decide how to find this linear combination is if it's uh, this, whatever the linear combination is, if we take it times our mean vector, that's our new mean vector for population one. And, we, and the same for population two. And the, and the covariance or variance associated with this linear combination would be this right here. Now, the goal of discriminant analysis is to find the best linear combination to maximize the, the squared statistical difference between these two means. Now, I have uh, quotes around statistical difference because I have a video out called Statistical Different Distance if you want it to get a basic feel or intuition of what that means. Um, but here, th this is, uh, we're looking at the statistical distance between the two populations. So here's the two mean vectors and we're dividing by the common variance associated with those. And we want to maximize this over all possible linear combinations. And so that means that we want, to, uh, we want to make this distance as far as part, and we want to make the variance as small as possible. Then that maximizes this number. Now, if we put back in what the, the transformations were, so the mean for population one was this, the mean for population two was this, the variance is this, and still we're trying to maximize this over all possible linear combinations. And we can factor out an L prime from both of those and we get this. Now, we're finished. And, and actually we use the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality on this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna flash back up here to a second. So look at this. We have a vector, we have a vector, and then we have a vector in the, and a matrix in between. So if we look at this situation and we divide both sides by this and bring it down, that's it. So we have B, a, a B vector, a D vector, and then we have this down below. That's exactly this case right here. And so this is maximized by the extended Cauchy-Schwartz inequality by this. And so this is maximized by this quantity here. And the choice of, of L that, that achieves this maximum is this right here. So this is the optimal linear combination to find, uh, to, to discriminate between po the two populations. So now this is, uh, you know, these are population parameters, which we'll probably never know. So we, we substitute in the sample moments to estimate the optimal linear combination. And so what, what is commonly done is these two mean vectors, you know, each is a number, and then there's a midpoint between them. And so the linear combination, using this linear combination of a new data point, X, if it's above the midpoint, then it goes to one population. If it's below the midpoint, it goes to the, the other population. Well, anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.